Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Emily Gu. I'm working in an orchestration engineering team inside uh, Intel. I used to be a Java developer, so I used like a, a Java, JEE, Spring framework, right? I don't know how many like a Java um, developer here. Then about like a, two years ago, I switched to to learn the Go language. So basically, now I'm a gopher. <laughs> Yeah, that's just about me. Actually, our today's topic is um, uh, spice up your desktop with uh, containers. I don't know how many of you have been used container either at your work or just uh, at home as your like uh, fun project, right? So how, how many, many of you already use the Docker? Oh, quite a few people, yeah. Yeah, we can see actually um, this trend, like use uh, <coughs> container uh, nationalization is going up, it's not going down. And you guys can check the, the Google uh, trend chart, right? To know the, uh, to see those numbers. So basically, um, we want to catch this trend to see why we need to use this one, right? And uh, today, actually, I want you guys to help me to see how the <coughs> containers affect our software development life cycle. So let's examine through each life cycle of our software development to see you help me to, to see if you affect each phase, right? So our first phase is kind of like a project initialization phase, like a concept, right? And research investigation. Do you think uh, if we use a container, uh, does this phase affected by containers? So what's your answer, is yes or no? If your answer is yes, I would like you to raise your hand. <coughs> okay, nobody raise hands. <laughs> so basically, oh, there's one. That's great. So if you say yes, right, you raise your hand. Do you want to give your answer why? Because no one else would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, I want this session really fun and interactive. Okay, not just me talk. I think every of you help me. Uh, we can discuss things, right? Okay, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think probably most of you are right. Uh, most likely it's not gonna affect this phase unless, unless in one exception. Let's see, if you need to do prototyping, POC, right? Then in this case, you might have to say, okay, I might need to use container if you decide to go that way, okay? So how about the design phase? That's one of the phase of software development. So do you think a container affect this phase? Yes or no? <coughs> yes, right? Yes, it depends on, on how you design your application software, right? If it's monolith, um, Probably not. If you decide to go with micro services, or at the least, I think uh, if you want to design your infrastructure at this phase, it could affect you, right? If you need to design the uh, infrastructure. How about the development and the testing phase? Uh, yes. 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 <laughs> cool. I heard a lot. Yes. So. Yeah, this phase definitely affect a lot. If you decide to go with the container, so you need to use container to do development and the testing, right? And what's the benefit by using container to do the development and the testing? Extended testing 
Yeah, definitely. That's the one. Yeah, the, the, the thing I like about it is uh, actually uh, isolate your development environment, not going to pull your desktop or laptop, right? Uh, everything is uh, reproducible and recreatable. Then just can be easily uh, removed, right? And the same thing for the testing, just like uh, uh, the guy I mentioned, right? Uh, you can, after your testing, because everything is the same, so you can just ship it. So the great thing about the container is, uh, actually easy your, your, your software shipment. You can just ship to the production, should be the same, right? Yeah, this is probably the last phase, is that you have to package your software after your development, right? Then you're going to release it. And this one, um, what's your answer? The container is it definitely yes, yes, yes right? Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely impact uh, this phase uh, heavily. Why we seeing that is, uh, if you look at uh, uh, how we now, even currently, you probably still need uh, this infrastructure. Like uh, you just uh, when you um, have. a uh, Deploy your software, like an application on the virtual machines, right? And then now, you know, uh, you're not just uh, want the, like, uh, normally your company now want the zero downtime, right? And, uh, and then, you know, the vertical scaling is not good enough. You want the horizontal scaling. So in, in these kind of things, when you have this many machines, actually I had such experience before. We have to deploy to like hundreds, thousands of machines to use like a shape uh, up. Actually we use the puppet scripts. Uh, that really helped us, but it's still a lot of work, right? Uh, even we have different uh, like uh, development uh, stages. We need to deploy to dev environment then we need to deploy it to QA because we have the enterprise application. Then we need to deploy it to stage. Then eventually we ship to the production, right? Um, actually, we need a whole like an infrastructure team to help us uh, to, to go through all this kind of work. Besides that, and the worst thing we had before is somebody said, hello, it worked in stage. It did not work. It doesn't work in production now. Uh, what's going on? How could we debug, debug in production? Right? I don't know any of you have ran into such a, like a headache, right? Before? Probably you did, right? Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. <laughs> so you think that's really painful, right? Yes. And uh, sometimes it could be really frustrated. Let's see how the container can help you. So let's see, now you, you made a decision. You say, okay, let's switch to use the container, right? What difference uh, would this make for you? Like we mentioned before a little bit ago, actually the container is, uh, you have more control over the container. Because the reason is, because you ship uh, your things as a, uh, infrastructure as a code, everything, the dependency is well defined in the code base, right? So you, you use the same kind of container to do your dev development, stage, and the production. So actually your production risk is reduced. And also, uh, I think it's awesome, like this way. But only the, the problem, um, Yes, because we have actual layer, like a container layer above your VM. That introduces a bit of complexity, right? And uh, if you have multiple container running, you probably need a container like uh, orchestration uh, management, right? Cannot uh, just uh, run in the container without uh, orchestration. So that's the thing. Then the, I think the main issue is we don't have enough people 
to uh, have enough experience to use the container. It's quite, a, actually it's still quite new, although it has been there for, for a few years, right? Yeah, I think people actually, I heard a lot of CEOs, actually, I did not talk to CEO, I just read online. <laughs> CEOs or some, you know, management, they say, oh, we need more like uh, people with this uh, skill. So I think today, I think we're going to spice up your desktop with containers. And uh, what I'm going to focus on is actually these uh, three tools. <coughs> One is uh, Docker Compose. Another is Mini Cube. The last one is uh, Compose. Did I pronounce right? Yes. <laughs> Compose? Yes. Yeah, it's kind of confused. I think how to pronounce it. Cool, thank you. Yeah, let's uh, quickly go over the, what is the Doc? Compose, right? It's really simple. Just think about it. It just uh, uh, lets you to write your multiple containers in one YAML file. Then you can use one command to run it. That's it. It's just that simple. In a YAML file, basically, you can specify your containers, kind of like a packaging. Your containers and your environment variables and your dependencies, right? Uh, that's it. So let's see Docker um, Compose. Then what is the fancy Kubernetes? I think everybody heard about it, right? Yeah, it, actually it's just the uh, orchestration engine for your like uh, container centralized uh, infrastructure. And uh, Today, actually, because, uh, for example, we, we don't have that kind of data center or some uh, tons of machines, right? So on your desktop, uh, you can just use the Minikube. Minikube actually running the Kubernetes cluster on a VM, just a single node on your laptop. So basically, I think uh, this is great to, to recommend to you guys uh, before you can, like, uh, ship your products to any like uh, CI, like continue integration, or like a production, all that kind of things. Uh, do, you, uh, do you want to have confidence to, to, to test in your laptop? And the last one is uh, Compose, right? And uh, this one actually is just a tool. Uh, we have the doc compose YAML file. We just use this to to converge the doc compose YAML file to orchestration like a executor uh, deployable like a deployment um, YAML file and a service YAML file. Okay, so we will use these two. Actually, uh, I learned this lesson actually before. Um, first of all, I did not know this tool. I had to write, uh, wrote like two set of scripts mm -hmm. to do this. One is just a doc uh, uh, compose file, right? Mm -hmm. Then I have to write in all the uh, deployment uh, YAML file and the service YAML file. Their syntax looks similar, but a little bit different, you know. But uh, you have to do this like manually, really mm -hmm. tedious, right? But uh, now with this tool, it just convert for you. Is that awesome? Yeah, um, at this stage, actually I want to mention, oh, it's so confusing. You guys, oh, doc compose, then Kubernetes. You know, compose, a lot of terminologies, right? I don't know whether you, you see, are they like a related? Yeah, I just want to do a little comparison here. I think they are related. Actually, if you look at the doc compose and the Kubernetes part, right? When you um, deploy, actually, is Kubernetes creates each container like in the parts. So they are actually similar, allow you to run multiple containers. That's their similarity. That means Docker Compose allow you to run multiple, running multiple containers. And the Kubernetes part allow you to run multiple containers. 
And then what difference between them? The difference is the part you can do the oxidation because it's in the Kubernetes, right? And the dog compose, it has the concept of node and the cluster, but you cannot do the oxidation. So that's the only difference, nothing else. So uh, on this, uh, so now probably you, you come up with the question, hey, they look similar, which one should I use, right? It's so confusing. And uh, which one should you use? I think uh, Docker actually is a primitive platform for all the orchestration engines. No matter is it Kubernetes or Docker Swarm, or you probably heard of something called uh, other thing like a Mesos, right? And the Rancher, right? All these kind of orchestration engine, they, they all use the Docker uh, as a primitive platform. So my advice is, and also from my experience, I think on the dev environment, it's very easy to use Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, because they are more lightweight, uh, it's not that heavy, you should just use that on your dev environment. Then, when it comes to production, you want to do development. Yeah, deploy to the Kubernetes, right? Uh, because uh, you can, I don't want to mention like uh, all the debate, right? Those kind of things. But uh, yeah, that's my suggestion. So you can know they are the friends, right? They help each other. So now actually we just uh, going to, I'm going to show you uh, when like a use case uh, for you to understand uh, how we use this at our work. Yeah, basically I'm going to use all these uh, three tools I just uh, mentioned. <coughs> and then uh, we have uh, this uh, telemetry element called snap, right? So we call this a little cute uh, total snappy. No. <laughs> Snappy, do you think Snappy is really happy, right? He looks pretty happy. Yes, really happy. Yeah, what are we going to do today is actually, we're going to uh, use these many collectors to collect uh, some uh, uh, system information, right? To collect data. And also I put it the Elasticsearch collector. I purposely put there, because I want to show you an example, because the Elasticsearch normally run in clust cluster environments. So I want to show you how we can like, uh, very easily to scale up or down the cluster component, cluster component by use both uh, Docker Compose right? and uh, uh, Kubernetes, both can do that. And besides that, after data is collected, we're going to publish our data into different endpoints. So in my use case, we're going to publish it to InfluxDB and a file, right? Of course, you can publish it to other places. That's just my example. Yeah, in this case, actually, we still need a, um, so eventually, I will show you the results, publish the data in Gra Grafana. Mm -hmm. That means you can visualize it. So we, we talk about this use case. So let's see, how many containers do we need? For the simplicity. Like a Elasticsearch, InfluxDB, Grafana, they have that kind of formal, like a Docker image, right? I can just pull them from Docker Hub, right? And um, for the application, like uh, all the um, collectors, uh, publishers, oh, okay. plus we need to use Snappy uh, Daemon. So we will package them all together into one image, okay? Um, I think if you guys are familiar, just like uh, you create one like a uh, Docker file, right? Um, then, 
that that image we call main image. Here you go. Actually, it's just that simple. Actually, Docker file, actually, everything is in my GitHub repo. It's open source. So after this, if you guys are interested, you can go there to find out details. So just that many lines. Actually, we 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 pack the whole like plugins, collectors, publishers, everything all together. Okay, <coughs> all the thing we needed, all the software we want to ship, right? Then we pull the others from the doc hub, right? <coughs> yeah, that's the Docker file. Actually, what I uh, I'm trying to focus on today is the doc compose Yama file, right? Actually, I have the, uh, how do you say, the link there. I'm going to show you in a little bit. So how to do that kind of uh, list all the containers there uh, with the environment level and the plus the dependencies, right? Then after that, do you remember uh, Docker Compose actually just win Yama file, win command, right? Bring up and bring down, it's that simple. So basically you just run one command, all your container is up and running, your service is running, and everything is working. Okay, I'm gonna show you that, okay? Uh, just that simple. Hopefully this can really make your life easier, right? Then you can do something else, right? You don't need to, <laughs> see, I know you guys don't cook in the kitchen that much. <laughs> But you're probably sitting in front of your computer all the time, right? So you need to spice up your computer, <laughs> your desktop. Yeah, then actually there is a command, like a, even the a dog a, um, compose can like a scale up and down your cluster. So this is actually really useful in the, like a, even the public uh, cloud, right? Uh, you want to save some money if you don't have the capacity, or you don't need that much capacity, or you can just, uh, you know, add more capacity, right, to your application, right? Yeah, another thing actually I forgot to mention, I, I just want to add you now, is actually container actually give you more control of your capacity inside the public uh, cloud. Think about it, because you, you have the public uh, cloud actually, mm, you have no control, you just bought that much uh, stuff, right? But if you package them with the containers, actually, you can pack more, right? You have a little control over the density, all the kind of things, right? Think about that way. Yeah, then actually we're gonna use this command. It's just one command, just that easy, you see? We just use the compose, then dash f, that means the point to the file you want to convert, right? Then you just type the command, say convert. Then actually I use the dash O to output it to the directory because I don't want to mess up just in my current directory, right? <coughs> then in here actually, when you go to the uh, deployment, that means you convert to the uh, deployable script, script for Kubernetes, right? Then you just use the kubectl to, to create, deploy your instance to Kubernetes. So they think the whole process is really simple, right? <coughs> then in the Kubernetes, actually, you can do the similar kind of uh, scaling up and down. Um, is uh, no issue. So basically, you can do this in your testing environment <coughs> to make sure everything works, right, before you ship. So do you guys have any questions? Um, what is Orchestration is like a scheduling or uh, resource management, so those kind of things. Like, uh, uh, does that answer your question? Um, like a uh, container, like a uh, communication, like uh, something you want to uh, interact with. When do you need orchestration? Uh, only when you have multiple containers that are running. Okay. I mean, not just one. If everything's going, you already handle that, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like you want to, for example, you want to control your workflow. Because uh, let's say you have multiple instances uh, running, like a cluster. And then you want to load balance, like a, you want the one have more, uh, too much work, and the other one does not have work. 
So you want to balance out your workload, all that kind of things. You can control through your orchestration. Okay. So any other questions? Oh, sure. So when you're talking about scaling this business is all due to me, um, what like scaling in size or like scale like are, are all these like containers connected? Like you talked about balancing, so you could like move resources over to another one. Oh, uh, it's a very good, good question. What I'm talking about scaling, for example, let me just use the Elastic Search as an example. Like you, um, let's see. You have a zero downtime, right, or something. You want to um, form the cluster to handle the elastic search. Normally, you never use one node to do elastic search, right? So you need a, like a master node. So it's like high availability. Yes, could it be like a high availability, and it could it be like a other things like you mentioned. It depends on your design. For example, like if you have an application you want to run in master a slave or kind of thing, you could uh, design like that. You could uh, put them up and the wind is waiting for each other. And how does it benefit me more than like using Zen and just making a bunch of virtual machines with Zen? Because that's what I do right now, I mean. Oh, actually I don't know the Zen, but uh, um, so can you tell me like, uh, do you think this will help you or Zen actually is better? <coughs> well, like a, like a container can be like five megs versus like a VM to get out of the whole image. So five megs? You know, actually, another thing is actually I heard is that VM actually starting uh, really uh, take time to get a start, really yeah. heavy. Yeah. And the container actually is lightweight. Actually, starting speed actually is faster. Okay. It's just like a rough machine. I don't know. Let me see. You should experiment to, to see uh, if a container can help you, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you can also have separation of concerns with good container design, right? What do you see? Separation of concerns, right? Yes. Yes. That's actually. Uh, very good. Actually, that belongs to the orchestration, right? Isolation, like that kind of things. Yes. Uh, so, if you don't, actually, I'm going to do demo first, uh, and afterwards, actually, you guys can um, welcome to ask more questions. So we bring up this uh, thing. Okay. Like at the beginning, actually, you saw actually our mini cube actually already start, so we can mm, see the <coughs> status. <laughs> uh, it's already running, right? Like I mentioned to you before, actually, this demo is very quick. Actually, this if you look at the yeah, <coughs> because the first thing I want to demo to you is uh, I only started a mini uh, cube, right? First thing I want to uh, show to you is just about use doc compose. So actually, Minikube is very cool. It has the Docker uh, daemon environment. Basically, you could use Minikube as Docker. Okay, that's the cool part. So we, we, we will do that first. So how you to use Minikube as a Docker? You need to just like a Docker. You need to, to source like an environment level, right? So how do you find that? Uh, sorry, I can't do it here. <coughs> you just do this help, right? If you if you don't remember things, then um. um so how to do that? So we find the, the command first. This one, right? Doc env, right? So you can copy this. You see? It tells you to run this one. So now actually you just again copy paste to source your environment. So now all your terminals actually is Docker ready. 
you can run any documents, right? Uh, for example, um, if we run now, uh, already have a bunch, right? Why is it already have a bunch? Because we haven't done anything yet. Yeah, those are just uh, Kubernetes stuff, right? They use Docker, like uh, we, we just said. So, so like that. But now, uh, let's see. Uh, here's my repo. Can you see my directory? Like, uh, I have this uh, project here, right? And then, actually, I'm going to go to, because I have uh, two, two package underneath. One is for doc compose, another is for Kubernetes. So let's go to doc compose directory, right? Uh, remember we see use this is very simple, which is win command, right? But do you guys want to look at the YAML file first? We can do that. Before we run it. Actually, this is uh, our YAML file. If you look at this, it's very simple, like I mentioned to you in the presentation. The first one actually is our main, is the main container. See that? Actually, in this image, right? I just, uh, it's just uh, my Docker file. You know, like the thing I show you, the Docker file. Basically, uh, over there, I just say, okay, I want this image because I already pre built push it to the uh, Docker hub, right? Then, then I say, okay, I want the influx DB, okay? Then you just say contain, uh, image is this, you can give the name, right? Then you, you tell them which part you want to export, right? Export. So other people can, uh, like other applications can use it because it's influx. I want to be able to, to write to it, right? Data. Then I tell them environment variable. I say, okay, when you uh, spawn, spin up this container, just uh, pre-create a database for me. Or you just create a data for, for me, right? Because I need a database to store data. Another thing is, uh, Okay, I say, okay, I, I want to visualize the data uh, in Grafana. So I just pull the same thing, just pull this image, then uh, expose port, right? Then lastly, okay, here, I put a two Elasticsearch node. Okay, the first one is my master, okay? Uh, because this one I call snap Elasticsearch, that's my master. And this is one I just call yes node. This is my, how do you say, cluster node for Elasticsearch. Because I don't want to run Elasticsearch on one node. Okay, I want to run at least two nodes, right? Yeah, uh, so things is very really simple just like this. You know, you define the environment level, right? But uh, did you notice actually you can, uh, in uh, doc, Compose, actually, you can define, uh, define these kind of dependencies. Actually, it's very neat. I really love this part. This one, actually, you can say, okay, for my main container to run in, I want the influx is up, right? I want the ground file is up, and the Elasticsearch is up. Everything's up, then, then run in my container, okay? Because my, my container has these kind of dependencies. So this doc compose is going to uh, help you to resolve all these kind of de uh, dependencies. So let's just run it now. So, so the command is uh, very simple. So the file is called like this, right? We just need to see up, right? You just need to see doc compose up, but uh, if you use dash D, that means you want to run in detached mode, okay? Otherwise, it's not detached. So let's run it. See, it's just going to create all the container for you. Everything is running. Then the cool part is actually, uh, you can echo the thing, like your IP address.
So you, if you echo this, you know your Docker uh, IP address is this one, right? So actually, you can go there to see the Grafana because the uh, data already there. Okay. So basically, we go to here. Yeah, this is the one. Actually, it's Grafana. See, already up and running. Then you you can go inside here. I I pre pre created the two dashboard for you, so you can just go inside and look at the data. See, the data just come in now. That's uh, this one is a system monitor, like we collect uh, like a CPU memory, all that kind of information, right? <coughs> just uh, coming in. Then. We have another one, it's called Elasticsearch. And uh, data just coming in like that, right? Um, yeah, so is that simple? That means you do this kind of testing and everything is working. You turn it to the whatever, your next, right? Like a CI or QA, whatever, right? <laughs> then, uh, because we are done the the thing, then how do you clean up uh, this one? Uh, you say, okay, I'm doing down my development and the testing, everything is working. Uh, you just use this command, just see dot compose, right? Same uh, YAML file, just see done. It's going to clean up the whole thing for you. And uh, beautifully, because your environment is never polluted, right? And everything's done, it's good, right? And also, because we're running this in the, <coughs> actually I should run that command first, run the, in the Docker environment, it was not deployed to the Kubernetes, right? So if you use the kube, like a CTL, to check for like a deployment, like a pod service, you should see nothing there, okay? And, but uh, I'm gonna show you later to see how to do that. Okay, now uh, what command we need to run? Because after this, everything's happy. It's okay. I wanna test at least once, right? In my, use my mini cube in Kubernetes environment, right? Before I shift to anybody else, right? So in order to do that, actually we use another tool, just like we said, uh, called Compose, right? Compose, I'm not saying. <laughs> then, then, then we just convert our doc compose YAML file to Kubernetes deployment and service file. Okay, let's do that now. So it's just called post, right? I think uh, then we remember it's just a convert, right? Oh, I need to show you something first. <coughs> I think I already created this directory called this one. Oh, you have something, so I need to delete it. I just see yes, right? Then you should see nothing there, right? Then uh, now we can run the this command. So this is a keyword. You want to convert it. Just to say convert, right? Then I want to output it to to this this one, right? So let's run that. Did you see all the file created? So if we uh, look at this again, you can see all the file was created. All this file is uh, Kubernetes deployment and the service file, okay? So it's effortless, right? You don't need to do anything, everything's working already. How are you is working? Because converted, they haven't deployed yet. So now you need to use the <coughs> mini queue to <coughs> deploy it, okay? How to deploy it? It's very simple, just one command. Uh, use kubectl. Uh, is, do you call kubectl or kubectl? I don't know. Kubectl. Kubectl. Kubectl, I'll call it. Um, so then you can see create, right, dash f. Because, look at that command. 
because all your file is in this directory. So you basically you can see just use a dash f point to this directory, everything is deployed. This is deployed already. So then um, how do you know it's working? Let's check, right? Uh, the good thing is even in Kubernetes uh, thing, you can use Docker to check, and also you can use uh, Cube CTL to check. Okay, you can use both tools. Okay, so if if we use uh, Docker to check, you can see docps. Oh, it's too much, right? Too much. Actually, we know that the before is something we deployed, and the other thing is not. Um. So how can we make the smaller? Probably this one. We can do something like, uh, you know, you, you can see, okay, I just want to look at uh, the thing uh, I did, did it, right? So you can do a filter. Let's try this. Yeah, it should have less written. This is what I'm trying to tell you. But anyway, um, then you can use the, the, the command, like, uh, You can see get path. See any paths created? Okay, did you see? Create this many paths for you. So you create a uh, two Elastic Search when Grafana, when Influx, right? Another is main. This is my telemetry um, container. Okay. Uh, this is a path, right? And also you can see actually. You see the service script, right? So you can see it, it creates the service for you. You can see it creates this many services for you. Uh, this, this kind of thing is inside the um, Kubernetes. It's uh, different than the previous one. Um, let's see now. Actually, I forgot to do the scaling for you guys uh, in previous story, right? Let's do the scaling in this one to see if we can scaling more nodes. I should have the command somewhere here. Let's uh, just uh, use that. Yeah, the last command. Let me explain to you. So if I run this command, what does that mean? Oh. Uh, because uh, you see the deployment, we, oh, I did not see the deployment. Okay, we can do the deployment first, just a minute. You can see we have this many deployment, right? So when you want to uh, scaling up, You basically use uh, kubectl to say scale, then you, you give the deployment name. You say with deployment is the ES node, right? <coughs> then you see I want to four, four more, right? We already have two, so if you add a four, it becomes six. So if you do that command, you can see it's easy to scale. Then if you do the deployment, you can see the nodes, yes nodes, like that. Okay, that's a total four, yes. Right? Yeah, and uh, I have to show you actually the uh, the visualization, the thing should just show up in the, how do you say, the Grafana, uh, even for this deployment, right? Uh, yeah, let me show you that quickly. Uh, just one check, okay? Because everything is running inside like a uh, Kubernetes, right? So. Uh, what I did is actually I just used the port like a forwarding. So then you can just see locally. Um, let's do that. Basically you use this command to find uh, your, your Grafana path, path, right? You find your Grafana path, then you want to forward the path to your local. So you can look the Grafana just on your local machine. That's what I did. Um, the command is like this one. It's uh, really simple. And you know that because that part, that part is the old part, right? It's not my current part. So I need to delete this one. 
Basically, I'm gonna copy paste. Which one is my graphene block? This one, right? Yeah, it's falling, right? Then actually you can look up just locally for those charts. And no, we have this one is not gonna work because now that because everything is local, right? Like that. So then, yeah, just like before, I created pre-created a like a dashboard for you, so you can just go look at it. You see, it's already this much for you because we talk so slowly. And yeah, look at this, right? You see the big jump, right? Um, here because. Memory jump because we did a scaling, you know. You can see, and the CPU should be jump too. See, yeah, big jump because uh, we did a scaling command, right? Yeah. Um. Basically, um. I think uh, that's all things I want to talk about today, and uh, I appreciate you come to my session, and um. Uh, yeah, let's. Uh, uh, welcome to check out, uh, out everything is open source. That means you can check out uh, my repo. And then we can connect on Twitter as well. Yeah, also, I would love to hear you guys' feedback um, as of any, like, a, like you mentioned, Zen, uh, any like other things, right? Uh, it's interesting. We can share the idea. Hey, question. Right. He's still uh, SCPing his, uh, his V-image over the box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you guys have any question, we still have like a few, I think uh, some time. Uh, yeah, welcome to ask uh, any questions. Uh, you can teach me something, right? So what are the strategies you would use for persistent data? And also you mentioned load balancers, but how, how would you, I mean, Yeah, I think uh, there's uh, things. Uh, yeah, you can uh, manage it, like you see workload, uh, load balance and stuff. Yes. And mm -hmm. persistent data. Uh, persistent data, you have to use this kind of like a persistent stores yeah. of your choice. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that persistent data defined in your Docker file then for the influx? Um, what was your question? The, so for the persistent data, do you define that in your Docker file when you? For yes. TV yes. Yes. Like you see, I in my dog uh, compose, right? Mm -hmm. I define that I want to use Influx DB as my uh, data persistent store. Also, I say okay, pre-create a database for me, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can use the other ones like uh, machine machine yesterday, like uh, um, any other kind. Yes. Is there a way to directly expose a network interface? So instead of mapping ports to directly expose it? I mean, no matter Yes, what that's a good question, Shane. Yeah, actually, uh, I think there's a way to do that. Like bridging with VMs. Kind of. Yes, like a uh, dog uh, compose, right? Can do that too. They have the network things. And also, uh, the pod actually inside the Kubernetes have, uh, each has its own like a network stack. Can, like they can talk to each other. Yes, there must be some way to, but my example just uh, do not have that. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so um, I just used Docker Compose uh, for the first time this last week, and uh, it's for like a, a blockchain mining application. So um, you just, you know, do the simple Docker Compose commands and it gets everything up and running, and it uses like web torrent to grab the, the data, and then you just mine with your CPU or whatever it is. But uh, it's really easy, and if you don't use the Docker Compose method to set it up, then you have to use um, install Node.js, and there's a lot more steps, and it takes a lot longer to get it set up. Yes, exactly. So. Yeah, Adam, yesterday, yeah. He told me this yesterday. I appreciate him to share this with you, yes. 
Otherwise, you know, you, you need to install a lot of stuff, right, on your local machine. Then, then also you need to worry about to remove, clean, clean them up, right? Because you don't want to pollute your environment, mm -hmm. right? Yes, awesome, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, yes. I was, I was curious about the, uh, the, the data collection, the SNAP, that I was looking at the documentation. What, uh -huh. what protocol does it use to talk to InfluxDB? Oh, does it it's use, like, just, uh, or something like that? Or? No, we do not. We should be just uh, HTTP RESTful oh, API. Like yes, yes. And also okay. now we, we have a gRPC. Okay. You, you could use that as well. And uh, most recently, we just have the a streaming. <coughs> Uh, which is a GRPC. Yeah, yeah. You can look it up, you know. Yeah, we have, uh, all this is uh, open source. Uh, you are welcome to, how do you say, contribute, right? And join our community and uh, contribute, okay? So be part of us. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? No, okay. Yeah, I appreciate this chance to how do you say study with you together. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, I know you. You guys have a lot of things for me to <coughs> learn. So, yeah, let's uh, keep uh, in touch and connected to help each other and uh, share the great technology can make our our life better. Thank you. The whole time? Uh, almost. Almost? Uh, like uh, 45 minutes? Yeah. Right? Good job. Oh, thank you. So, did you really like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did good. Did not put you guys sleep into yeah. sleep? No, no, ah. look good. The only, uh, the only feedback I had is for you is at the end you should put your contact information so people can con you put it at the beginning, but you also should have it at the last slide so that way people can. Oh, it's a good suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good one. Right? Yeah. That's a, yes, so, thank anyway. you. Well, it was very good talking to you, meeting you. Yeah, it's a very good meeting you. Yes. Yeah. If you we'll guys uh, come friends, to. Uh, I'm curious if you had a lot of people at Intel do uh, using Minikube. I've, I've been, I'm working for a company where we're doing live video processing, uh -huh. uh, and so we're having problem, problems with people on Macs using Minikube because it's like FFmpeg like trying to encode video as fast as possible, but it's in the Minikube virtual machine, so it's really, really slow right now. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I'm curious if, I'm, I'm just trying to talk to everybody I can about like, I'm curious what Intel does for like developers, dev environments, and Kubernetes and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, actually, just for our group, I oh, okay. don't really know the other group okay. inside uh, Intel. Okay. And uh, so you mentioned the uh, trouble. Like, what kind of trouble you have for running Minikube? Uh, most of my developers are front end devs. Oh. Or, or have that kind of background, uh -huh. and they're using Macs.